Good song, huh? It's amazing how much truth is actually in that song. Because in all reality, that's why the church exists. The church of Jesus Christ, Catalyst, One Life, all those other ones, they exist to restore you and me into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And ultimately, God himself. And, here, and here's the deal. During this series, we, we've been talking about parenting. We've been talking about all these things that deals with, with the family. And after praying about what I'm going to preach on tonight, I started to, key word for today, worry. I had a, a week, let's just say, three months of worry. Worrying about what people think about me, what people do at the church or away from the church. And this is what I realized just a, really just a couple of days. I was actually talking to, where is, where is she at? She's not here. Christy, there she is. I was talking to Christy just Friday night. And we just started to discuss about stuff um, of, of just life. And I, she shared with me just something um, personal. And I said, is it in your control? She's like, mm, I can do this. Is it in your control? She's like, I can do this. The truth of the matter is, you're not in control. Chrissy, you're not in control. Dave's not in control of what other people, or I'm not even in control about myself. So when I'm preaching this message today about worry, I think everything of life family, job, children, and everything wraps around if we're going to worry or not. Because some of you might be worried that your children might not graduate. You might be worried that your children might be going out and getting their groove on out there. You might be worried about your finances, but in all honesty, you're not. Dave's not in control. And I love, there's a, a, a pass or verse in, in the song, it says this. So, if you're feeling like it's falling apart, and it can't go on anymore. Anybody feel that way? Amen. All right, all right. So, if you're feeling like it's falling apart, and it can't go on anymore, God is a God who knows how to heal. So give it up to the Lord, and He will restore. Today we're going to be talking about worry. And I believe that if you take worry out of the equation of anything, including family, God will restore you into the beautiful place, and it's going to be okay. So, let's start this conversation. Everybody say hi to Miss Erin. Aaron is actually our leader of our First Impressions team, by the way. If you're interested in greeting and saying hi to people and passing out worship guides, she would love to see you afterwards. Okay. So worry. Give me some things, just one word, that people worry about. Anybody? Oh, hold, hold, hold. raise your hand. Let's do class. Okay. Money. All right, put money up there. All right, what else? What your spouse is doing. Do we need to have counseling after this? Okay. All right. Oh, sorry. What's that? Your children. Okay. So money, children, your spouse. Jenny? Health. Good. Health. Okay. Time. Okay. What were you going to say? Work. All right. Am I going too fast for you, Aaron? All right. Good, 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 good. Yes, sir. I'm sorry? Life in general. Good, good, good. What else? Yes. What you, you got, young lady? School. Okay. All right. Anybody over here? You don't worry, okay? So you guys need to be teaching, okay? What do people, might, maybe not you, worry? Okay, the block party, church events, good, all right? Somebody over, Lisa. Your parents. Relationships, good. Christy. Conception, okay, good. Jobs, good, what else? Friends. <laughs> She's like, all right, she, all right, yes, sir. Transportation, good. Yes, ma'am. What people think, good, 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 good. All right. Addictions, good, okay. All right, slow down. 
All right, we're, we'll use those. I think you got them all, Aaron? What people think, what people think, what people think addictions, and was there something else? Transportation. Transportation? Okay. Vehicles? Okay. All right, so we'll wrap everything you just said into what Aaron's writing down. So thank you, Miss Aaron. So God knows you know. Okay, so let's give Miss Aaron a hand for a second. Thank you very much. <laughs> By the way, you can read this because I can't spell, so that's good. All right. Let me ask you this. Uh, just, just help me out for a second. There's a difference when it comes to worrying about something and controlling it. When we're talking about worry, I've got to pre I put a preface on all this. Worry, when we're talking about giving to God, giving it to God, is not this. Sitting on your butt and not doing anything about it. Okay, in other words, like the first one, if you're worried about money, don't sit on your butt and not get a job, okay? Then you've got a whole lot more to worry about, relationships and other things like that. With that being said is, let's, with that being in mind, are, are we actually in control of our money? No, are we actually in control of our spouse? <laughs> Some of you ladies think you are, but <laughs> okay. Are we actually in control of our children? All right, would you like to be? Yes. Guess what? You're not. Okay, are you, in are you in control of your health? No, uh, really not, absolutely not. Right now, you could, you could have a heart attack and die right now. Don't do it. Jenny's a paramedic or whatever. Or I think we have a paramedic in here. Where, are, are, you actually, are you actually in control of your work? No, could, you could your boss fire you just like that? Absolutely. Or if you're the boss, you could die. Okay. All right. <laughs> are, you, are you really in control of your life? Really not. Are you in are you control of school? No. Church events? No, I'm not even... I can even do that. Relationships, friends, parents, vehicles, what people think. Oh, my Lord. Are, do you, are you in control of what people think about you? So why do we worry? All right. Trust me, I'm preaching to myself this one. All right, addictions. Okay. Are you in control? No. Are you seriously in control? All right, you're not. And you could come up with all the scenarios in the world why you are. And if you come up with all the scenarios in the world why you are in, in control of all this, guess what? You're a control freak. <laughs> you could die right now, and I hate that because I'm a control freak. But in, all rea <laughs> but in reality is this. We worry and we should not. I worry and shame on me for worrying. We're going to look into a passage right now that's going to revolutionize your life. What if I could tell you right now that what I'm about to share with you is a secret. That the Bible shares that if we would just do the following, you would never have to worry about money again. How many guys would be taking extra notes? Okay. How about if you, if really, what are the secret that I give you from God's Word is so good that you never have to worry about what other people think about you. Would you take extra notes? There is a secret. It's really not a secret. But it's a secret because the devil doesn't want you to hear what we're about to share. So if you would, turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to start in verse 25. And if you have a red Bible, the, the, there's a red Bible in your seat. And if you don't have a Bible of your own, that red Bible is yours to Yay. keep. Keep that Bible of your own. But of course, if you have like 17 Bibles, don't take it. Leave that for somebody else. But it's on page 679 in your Bibles. Here we go. You ready for the secret? Are you guys with me? Yeah. You ready? I'm about to reveal something to you that will change your life. You ready? Here we go. This is the secret. You ready? Verse 25. It says this. Therefore I, pause, <laughs> I, 
For those of you guys who have more decent Bibles than our red Bibles, what color is I? Red. Okay, red. Okay, it's red. So who is saying I? Jesus. Okay. I want something to put in perspective before we move on that we have to put on the table is this. I is Jesus. Jesus say, say for, therefore I say to you, in other words, I, Jesus, by the way, Jesus is God. He's the creator of the universe. He's the creator of the flowers. He's the creator of everything. He's the creator of you. He's the creator of me. And he's the creator of all the beautiful creatures. We just sang about the stars in the sky. We just sang about all this awesome stuff. And here's this I, this God, who, who simply says this. Says this. I'm going to give you the secret of not worrying. Just listen to me. But many times we do this. We say, I know you, Jesus, God, think you know what's best for me, but I'm still going to worry about this. Think about that. God, the creator of you, the creator of life, the creator of the ground you walk on, and check it, check it, check it, check it, the air you're breathing right now. You're like, do we ever think about really breathing? Do you ever just think about breathing? Maybe Eric Jordan does, but um, all right. Think about this. We, if we actually thought, I, I, I tried this before. I tried this before, and it's actually scary. Don't do it now, or you'll pass out. If you actually think about breathing, you start actually hyperventilating. Because you and I are trying to control what God has already created, your lungs and your esophagus and all what, whatever's doing this, whatever's in there that allows you to breathe, you're not even in control of that. So God made this air so perfect that you and I can breathe, but immediately he could take it away just like that. That is the I that we're talking about here. I, God, that's in control of life, is giving you a secret. You got the perspective? Yes. Okay. So it's this. Therefore, I, God, the creator of the universe, tell you, not just here's recommendation. I'm telling you this. Have you ever done that to your kids before? It's like they're doing something stupid and they, they, they're, they come, hey, come or Ethan. I do this all the time. Come or Ethan. And he's like, what, daddy? I'm like, I'm telling you to stop. That's the dynamic. Dramatic talk that he's trying to do here. I, daddy -o, who could kill you, son, not really, just don't call CPS, just, okay. I, the one who brought you into this world, I love that statement, that's awesome. Especially now that I'm, I tell you, son, stop and listen to daddy because daddy knows best. <laughs> not really, but it sounds good. Okay. That's the dramatic power that he's trying to shout out. He's saying, therefore I, the creator of the universe, is telling you the following. Do not worry. The secret's out of the bag. Right? But we're worried. I'm worried. And shame on us for putting God in a box because God can do whatever he wants to. God can and will restore. Therefore, I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you'll eat or what you'll drink or your body and what you're going to wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? I, put in this perspective, what he's doing is this. He's preaching to this crowd on, the, on a, a mountain, and he's actually trying to preach to his disciples, his believers, his true believers. And, but he's talking to this entire crowd, and this, most of the entire crowd are poor. They, could, they don't know where they're going to get their food the next day. They don't know where they're going to get their drink the next day. They don't know. They might have two pairs of clothes, two pairs of clothes. Okay, like that's two pairs of underwear. If you go on a vacation... How many pairs of underwear do you bring? 75. Okay. 
But you got the picture? They have two pairs of underwear, if they even wear underwear. But they have just a couple pairs of clothes and they're worried about the basics. So I'm putting this in perspective is this. Jesus is talking to these people and said, don't even worry about the basics of life because I've got your back. That's what he's saying. And we're worried about money. We're worried about transportation. And God's like, that's big, but you don't even worry about the little stuff because I've got it all taken care of. There are some things that I wrote down that causes people to worry. Few um, results of worry. And these are some things that I wrote down. Number one, by worrying, it could damage your health. True? When I worry, and, and if just don't start looking at my face, and you'll be able to tell I'm worried. When I worry, I break out in massive zits. You're like, that's sick. I'm leaving this church. You talk about zits in church. But I can't control it, but I worry, and it causes a chemical imbalance or whatever. I clean my face, but it just, it's, it's there. But true. Is it true? You get ulcers. You get, you get, you get stressed. You get gray hairs. You get, true? Will it affect your health? Okay. It consumes your thoughts. True? Absolutely. Worry consumes your thoughts. That's not healthy. Lack of productivity. True? Most of the times when we worry, this is what we do. We just suck our thumb and just like, life is terrible. Life is just terrible. And I, I don't want to go to work today because she said I'm fat. <laughs> now we know the truth makers. And, okay, lack of productivity. And then number four is something that's so true. Negative mistreatment of others. Whenever we're worried, we take out our worry on other people. And I do the same thing, especially on my children. When I'm worried about something, the people that I love the most, like my family, I come home and I'm just a butthead. I really am. Because I mistreat them because of what the drunks happened in my life and my worry. Sinful actions and addictions. This is huge for some of you guys recovering addicts or current addicts. When life is, if your family's falling apart, if something is going on, all of a sudden you turn to the booze, you turn to the drugs, you turn to sex, you turn to all these addictions because that is your comfort zone. And in other words, you're going to continue to where you're going to add addictions onto your life. And then reduction of trusting God. Reduction of trusting God. I love in verse 27 it says this. Can anyone of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And the answer is no. Actually what does worrying do? It takes it away. So why worry? I love this. Okay. And it continues. So, so, so Jesus is, is just talking then, then verse 26. It, it, he's trying to explain it. He's trying to explain it. He says this. Look at the birds of the air. Look at the birds of the air. They do not reap or sow or store away in barns. And yet, I underline this next word, your. You check that out, your. In, in, in other words, it means your God the one that you value, the one who loves you so very much. It says this, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or weep or store away treasures in heaven, yet their heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Go to the other picture for a second, the other video for a second, the one about the birds. I want you to look at these birds for a second. The video, not the flowers, we're going to get to that. Aren't they pretty? We'll get to that in a second. But I want you to look at these birds for a second. We don't have a bird video. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> you want to do the you want to do the elementary thing where you close your eyes and think about birds? Okay, all right. If you want to close your eyes, you can. That's fine. But just think about birds. They just they just fly around and they're so peaceful and everything until a hawk comes and eats them. But that's God's providing for them because that's that's how nature works. But these beautiful birds that are flying around and they're making their nests and, and they're, 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 they're just going around and having meals of worms or whatever. They're just, they're beautiful creatures. They're absolutely beautiful creatures. We, we just put a bird feeder up outside our house and we have all these birds that are coming. I had to almost kill a, um, not a squirrel, the other, other God's creation, 
raccoon, stupid raccoon. All right. But when you look at them, they're absolutely beautiful. And do you think that those birds in their little small mind is worrying where they're going to eat, where they're going to get that worm? The answer is absolutely not. And God's like, aren't you my creation? Aren't you the one who was created in my image? The one that the entire earth was surrounded by? The the people, the human beings that I sent God down to earth in human form, Jesus, to die for you, aren't you more important than these? And God still takes care of the birds. So the very first thing I want you to write down in your notes is the following. In order to accomplish or to grab the secret of worry, the very first thing is that you need to have a relationship and become a disciple of Jesus. I asked you to underline a word that says your. Guess what? If you are not a follower of Jesus, in other words, if you're not a true Christian, this verse that we're talking about here is not for you. So if you are a non-Christian, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you have a lot to worry about. But the very first thing that you need to focus in on is do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Do you have faith that God loves you enough? Yes, all all your junk, everything about you. Do you believe that God seriously loves you enough, everything about you, and sent his only son to die for you, live the perfect life, died on the cross for your sins. He died for you so that you don't have to worry about your salvation, your eternity. So the very first thing is, can you say your? In this passage, it says the following. It talks about the birds and it says, and yet your, in other words, your God, you can't claim God is yours if you don't have Jesus Christ because there's a separation. So this passage, the very first thing To stop your worry is start a relationship with Jesus Christ today. I'm going to give you an opportunity at the end. And then it says this in verse 28. Now you can put the flowers up. Okay, here we go. 28. And why do you worry about your clothes, women? I don't think it said women, but I think why why do you worry about your clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. In other words, they don't do anything. They don't work. And yet, I tell you, God tells him that not even Solomon. Solomon was, by the way, the most, the, the most rich. That doesn't make sense. The richest man ever. The most wise man ever. And he had this beautiful gardens and beautiful paradise and beautiful awesomeness. And it says this. Not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like the grass of the fields, which is here today and tomorrow, is thrown into the fire. Will not he clothe you? With, he will clothe you, O oh, ye of little faith. So, he's like, okay, check that. all this stuff. Isn't that beautiful? Aren't those beautiful pictures? Absolutely. I mean, they're just absolutely gorgeous. And so are you in God's eyes. So why worry about, please wear clothes. But why worry even about your clothing? Why are you worried what other people think about you? Why are you worried about, it's it's, Caleb came up to me this morning and said, that's a nice shirt. I'm like, yeah, it's it's really cool. Um, I got it at Worldwide Missions or something like that for $3. I guess you like that place. Okay. All right. And I showed him the tag and I said, it's Banana Republic. And he's like, I love Banana Republic. And I'm like, I guess I do too, but it's $3. But why are we worried about the tag on our shirt? Why are we worried that it's Banana Republic or, or Gucci or whatever stuff is out there? Go to Walmart, save your money, and buy some clothes. Don't even go to Walmart. Go to Goodwill. Let all the non-Christian people who donate the clothes 
You go buy it cheap and use your money to serve God. Forget the Banana Republic. Wear clothes. Okay. And then it says, so don't worry saying what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to drink, what am I going to wear, for the pagans run after these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them. So my challenge before giving up the rest of the secret is this. Simply, you need to start with a relationship with Jesus Christ. So how do we... Because here, here's the thing. I know what your mind is thinking, and I know there's worry warts in here. True? And I'm the, I'm the king of them, trust me. Why do we worry if God takes care of the birds? He takes care of the flowers. He takes care of everything we need. It's because we're sinful people wanting to control everything of life. True? I think the very first thing that we need to understand is you and I are not God. But God is God. And he will restore. So there's one verse that I'm about to share with you that wraps us all together. How do you, as a true Christ follower, so now I'm talking to you as Christ followers. By the way, if you're not a Christ follower, I already talked to you. You can take a nap for a second. All right? But if you are truly a Christ follower, this is how you access the don't worry. You ready to take some notes? The very first thing is this. There's only two things. Prioritize everything around God's kingdom. Prioritize everything around whose kingdom? God's kingdom. This is what it says. But, he said, but, he's like, don't worry about all this stuff, but this is how you don't have to worry. But seek third, right? Oh man, you should have jumped on that one real quick. Okay. But seek, desire after first his kingdom. Do you realize that everything does not belong to you? Do you I mean, do you realize that? But God has given you and given me stuff. He's given us clothes, Banana Republic. He's given us clothes. He's given us stuff because he loves us and he wants to take care of us. But in reality, in order to not worry about the stuff God has given us, we need to understand that the stuff, your life, your family, your children is not yours. Dramatic pause. I'm going to say that again. Do you realize that everything, the oxygen is not yours, the shoes that you wear is not yours, the, the water that you drink is not yours. Do you realize that you are not even yours? Do you realize that you belong to God and God could kill you anytime he wants to? And <laughs> You're like... This church is weird. It's like, are you going to bring out the snakes now? It's, no, that's tomorrow, next week. Just joking. J just joking. Check these two verses out. It says in Psalms 24, verse 1, it says, The earth is David Whitmore's. Is that what it says? The earth is the Lord's and everything except what I own. Everything except what Jonesy owns? I'm not going to do that again because make, that makes sense. Everything in it, the world, and all who live in it is who? The Lord's. Guess what? Do you live in the world? Yes. So you don't even own yourself. Congratulations. Here's the greatest message in the world. It's not about you. It's not about me. So stop worrying about things that you're out of control about. And then Matthew 28, verse 18, it says, And Jesus came to them and said, All authority is in heaven and earth has been given to me. I'm going to try to illustrate this. I stole this. I'm, I'm stealing this from another man's message, um, this illustration. His name is Dave Ramsey. Anybody know who Dave Ramsey is? Yeah. Okay. So actually, it's actually good stuff. Okay. 
All right, so let's see. Caleb, come up here. Ronnie, come on up here. All right. Everybody say hi to Ronnie. Hi. <laughs> Don't mess with him. He's a minor. All right. And everybody knows Caleb. All right. Everybody say hi to Caleb. Hi, Caleb. All right. I'm going to give you an illustration. And this illustration is probably the most expensive illustration that I've ever and will ever do. And whatever is in this package, gentlemen, I will need it back. <laughs> you can't promise it? This is God stuff, not because, <laughs> okay. Ronnie, step right here. Ronnie, in this package right here is $100. The original illustration was 1000 but we don't have $1,000. So $100. Ronnie, I am going to let you hold on to this. And remember, this is an illustration, and this money comes back to me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> What's that? Who's worrying now? <laughs> there you go. So for this illustration's sake, um, Caleb, you're going to represent a bank. A banker doesn't look like it, but you're a banker. Okay? All right, so you're a banker. And Ronnie, you're the owner of, of, of that money, and you worked hard for it. It's your money. Right? I mean, it, it's, it's temporarily your money for this. Oh, oh, yeah, you want to give this to the bank? All right. Illustration. Work with me. Okay. So you've worked hard for this money. That money is your money. And you've decided to take a portion of your money and give it over to the bank. So give it over to the bank. Yeah, all of it. I mean, not to Caleb. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. So here's the scenario. This person right here has, has just worked, he's worked hard, it's his money, and he's given a portion of his money, his belongings, um, over to the bank. Got the picture? And then all of a sudden, it's Mother's Day, and, and Ronnie wants to buy something nice for his mother or, or his beloved wife, and he walks into the bank, and he's like, hey, banker, give me my money. The banker in this case says, um, sir, you know that money that I gave you? That money, I thought that it was a gift to me to do whatever I wanted to do with it. And the money that... <laughs> and the money... That'll actually work out very well in a couple minutes. <laughs> He's going <laughs> to... No blood and violence, please. Okay. That is going to work out at the very end of, the, of this illustration very well. Okay. All right. The money that was given to the banker, and the banker has basically said, here's the deal. I went out and I went on a cruise with your money. And it's spent... I can't give it back or I cannot use it for you. And the banker, he's like, I'm, I'm sorry, but the money is gone. The money has disappeared. The money is not there. I, I used it on myself. Was that the money the bankers to spend? Okay. It was not the bankers to spend because it belonged to the owner. But the owner trusted the bank to hold on to the money for protection that at any time the owner could come to the bank and said I need to withdraw so that I can use it for my purposes how that make you feel how does that make you feel Ronnie we're in church okay All right. how many of you guys are going to get really ticked off how many of you guys, oh, take it, banker. You're fine. I hope you enjoyed the cruise. I can't pay for diapers, but thank you. All right? <clears throat> Only one of you guys. Okay. All right. But here's the deal. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, of course, twist it. This is actually how God is. Ronnie represents God. And Caleb represents us. God has entrusted his money, 
his family, his world, his car, his church to us so that one day he's going to ask you and me to do something with the money for his sake. He's going to ask you one day to do something with your family for his sake. He's going to ask you one day to do something with your life that doesn't belong to you anyway for his sake. But we waste our money. And all God money-wise asks you to obey and says, I'm going to give you 90% of what I'm going to give you. I'm just asking for 10% back of my money. But do we waste God's money? Do we waste our family? Do we waste our life? That's a rhetorical question that you need to ask yourself because point one is simply this, that you need to make sure you prioritize everything for the kingdom of God. Let's give these guys a hand and give me my money back. All right, you got this? Oh, you're going to key him. All right, sounds good. Put that deep into my pocket. Okay. So with that being said, there's just one more thing. It says, seek ye first his kingdom. And then the next passage says, seek ye first his kingdom and what? His righteousness. So in order to not worry, number one, realize it's not yours. Number two, live as if you belong to God. As if everything you do, God's saying good job or bad job. Because we need to live a righteous and holy and set apart life. And if you really look at this, I mean just, I'm just these are your things, not mine. If we live a righteous life and be obedient to God and saying it's your money, not mine, would we have to worry about our money if we're doing what we're supposed to do with it? Would we have to worry about our spouse if we would do what we're supposed to do and you and your spouse would worry about living a righteous life? Not worry, but do be a righteous person. Would we have to worry about our spouse? If our spouse was a righteous person and lived that out, right? We wouldn't have to worry about that. Our children... If we as parents would do our best to raise our children and model what righteous and holy living was, I don't think our children, including mine, would be as jacked up as they are. Time. If we manage our time, you go throughout this entire list and listen. Just with the statement we say around here is listen to God and do what He says. Listen to God, the creator of all, and listen. Your life is not yours. And listen. Live like he wants you because you don't belong to you. You belong to God. And you're like, who are you to tell me that? God. So my challenge to you is the, the following. Are you going to worry anymore? The answer is probably yes. But my challenge to you is this. Try not to worry. But some of you right now have dug a hole so deep financially, so deep with your children, so deep that it's going to be a, it's going to have to be a miracle not to worry about the junk that you have dug deep in your life and with your children and your finances. But guess what? God is a God who can restore. You think that your life has been dug so deeply with all the worry and all the stuff that you've done that's not God-centered, I promise you today, if you truly repent, you truly say, God, I'm sorry for this. I'm sorry for the way I treated my kids. I'm sorry for taking your money. I'm sorry for doing this. I'm sorry. For... I believe he's, he'll know your heart, and he's like, I'm going to restore this more than you ever could imagine because your heart is in the right place. The last passage says, therefore, since God takes care of the birds, he takes care of the flowers, he takes care of us, and he's saying, don't worry. He said, therefore, do not 
worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So simply, today starts your days of worry. And may it not happen anymore. So we're going to do something kind of practical at the very end. Does everybody have a worship guide? If not, just, just write on a piece of paper or something. And this is my challenge. My challenge to you is the following. I'm going to encourage you, while the band sings in a second, to write down your worries. I believe there's a spot on your worship guide for that, right? Yeah, write down your worries, and I've got a challenge for you. And the challenge is simply this. Pick three of your worries, three, just, just three, three of your worries, and for one month, I'm not saying change your entire life, I'm saying for one month, just my challenge. For one month, choose three things and manage it like Jesus would. So maybe it's your money. For one month, I'm going to tithe. For one month, I'm going to not waste my money. For one month, I'm going to make sure my children are right the way Jesus wants. So so three things that you're worried about, write them down. My challenge is for you. For one month, focus those three things on Jesus and watch a miracle happen with the right heart.